with a camera. Starring Charles Bronson. I'm Mike Kovac, freelance photographer. Prize fighters and sports layouts are not my specialty. But this Joey Savoyan interested me. I had known him well as a nice kid on the east side, but growing up seemed to have turned him sour. Suddenly, he was belting newspaper men around, smashing up cameras. Joey Savoyan had turned into a regular tiger, so they said, but I meant to have a picture or two of him with his claws out, if necessary. You here again, Mike? <laughs> I thought you went back to New York. Not till I get the shots I want. Look, Mike, don't make it rough, huh? Joey's just getting a shot at the title. Now, if he wants his privacy, that's his business. Jasper, you're Joey's manager. Why don't you explain to him he's public property now, and as long as he's in the news, he's going to get his picture taken one way or another. Mike, Joey don't want any. He's even hired a pug to guard the gate just so everybody gets the message. I mean it, Mike. You're going to get into trouble. Is that a threat, Jasper? Well... That pug's pretty tough. Ask Charlie. This gorilla threw me over a hedge about an hour ago, Mike. I thought I was going to be the first man put into an outer orbit. <laughs> Maybe you didn't say please, Charlie. What do you want? I got a message for Joey Savoyan. He's an old neighborhood friend of mine. I don't take messages from photographers, Mac. But I got one for you. Get out of here. Get out of here. What's the matter with you, Joe? You trying to win a gold medal for being the most hated man in the country? A huh? watchdog you turned out to be, sir. What'd you do, take a bite out of yourself? Who do you think you are, anyway? I'll all right, all right, part. all right. Go on, take your muscles outside. I'll take care of my care. You're gonna knock him flat on his back, aren't you? Well, I don't know. Now, that all depends. What do you think, Mike? I think you better grow a whole lot bigger or go out and hire yourself a squad of Marines. That's what I think. And I'll tell you something else. When well, you made good as a fighter, the whole neighborhood adopted you as their all-time hero. Then when the news story started to come out about what a miserable heel you are, they're all ashamed of you. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. I was over at the champion's camp. It took me ten minutes to get a full series of shots. I come down here and I have to hold a debate with your manager and wrestle with his ex-pug here. Is that any way to treat a friend? Look, why don't you shut up, huh? Because there's nobody here big enough to make me shut up, least of all a punk like you. And I can lick you now just as I licked you the day you were running errands for my father. Okay, big mouth. There's no shortage of gloves. Hey, can I get a picture of you when you're flat on your back? That meatball couldn't lick one side of me the best day he ever saw. All right, come on, Joey. Show me how tough you are. All right, let's see that big left, Joey, boy. Hey, boy, let's go. I'm going to go back to the neighborhood and tell them how you eat grown men alive, Joey. Hey, watch out for that guy. He never learned to fight like that in any YMCA. What's the matter, Joey? <coughs> Up there, old Jasper. Come on, come on. You'll have to do better than that. Now, look, you can't go in there, guys. You know the rules. Joey don't perform for no public. Why don't you go have some more sandwiches, huh? Come on, let's have that big punch.
There he is. Hey, Joey, what happened, sir? Well, why don't you go in and see for yourself? Huh? Joey, look, let go, will ya? Don't wake him up yet. Let us get our pictures first. Hercules, you're in the wrong league. All out and change for the local. We're proud of you, boy. I want to tell you, we're proud. With a picture like this, we can all go back to New York. Is this a pro? Is this a dedicated man? I guess I went begging for it. He's a sweet guy, isn't he? He's such a shrimp lamb, he's gonna fill Yankee Stadium like a shoebox. Just with people who want to see him get murdered. Well... You can't win them all. You're going back to New York with us, aren't you? Not until I get my pictures. But we've got it right here, like I told you. Mike Kovac scores again. This has to be better than Purple knocking Dempsey through the ropes. Any one of the boys, myself included, will be happy to make you up a nice set of prints. Why don't you shut up? Help me off with the gloves. <laughs> sure, Mike. All jokes aside, you'll never get a picture of that young gorilla unless you burn down the house. You got any matches? Good evening. What do you have? I'd like this small steak, man. Why don't you try the spare ribs? Why? They're pretty good. And besides, we got an awful lot of them left over since all those other newspaper fellas went back to New York. Uh, you been to the Champs Camp or Joey Savoyans? I tried them both. That Joey. Oh, boy. What about him? He's a real killer, ain't he? How about that silly jerk he belted out today, huh? What do you mean, silly jerk? Some newspaper photographer. I figured you must know him. He goes and puts on the gloves with Joey Savoyan. Now I ask you, what kind of a knucklehead would pull a stunt like that, huh? I'll have the spare ribs. Good. One set of ribs. Coming right up. Mike? I'm Dolly McDermott. I don't know that you'll even remember me. Dolly? Dolly from the old neighborhood, Elizabeth Street? <laughs> well, sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Gee, I couldn't have been more than 15 years old when we moved from there. I guess girls grow up pretty fast. Yeah, I guess they do. <laughs> how's your family? Oh, they're fine. And how's your dad? Oh, he's fine. He still has that little photo studio, you remember? What are you doing way up here, Dolly? Well, Joey phoned me. So I bought a car from a friend and drove up from New York. He had a feeling you'd be somewhere here in the village. Joey Savoyan? A clinker like him and a girl like you? Oh, now, wait a minute, Mike. Now, just hold it right there. All right, all right. Forget it. I guess I'm not out to reform the world. Mike, listen. Joey feels very badly about what happened this afternoon. I bet he does. He needs you. What's he want to do, belt me again? Now, listen to me, Dolly. I was up there today for hours. He could have talked to me then if he wanted to. So don't give me any of that dear old pals routine. The next time I see dear Joey boy, I'm going to be carrying a baseball bat. You, of all people, believing all these ridiculous stories that are being circulated about him. Look, all I can tell you is things are not what they seem to be. Well, won't you even listen? Uh, something for the lady? Have something to drink. How about some coffee? Okay, coffee. Okay. You were saying? I don't know what I was saying, except that he's in trouble and he needs your help. Look, Joey phoned me today right after he'd seen you this afternoon. And he said it just occurred to him how you could help him out of all this mess he's in. He wants you to come out to the camp tonight after dark. That is, if you're willing. And he'll see to it that the rear door of his cabin is unlocked. What's all the cloak and dagger business? 
Mike, believe me, I don't know the details. All I know is that he begged me to have you come out tonight to bring your camera and just listen to what he has to say. Tell me barbecue sauce has some very good healing qualities. Or would you rather I get you an ice bag for your head? The late New York papers just came in. You were so modest about it. Why didn't you tell me it was you? Oh, Mike, please don't let this keep you from going back out, please. Uh, I'll give it one more try, but I'll tell you right now. I don't know what I need most, a picture to top this one or a new set of brains. Joey wanted us to park a little way from the house where we wouldn't be seen. Well, here goes. Good luck. Well, Joey. Hi, Mike. I had dinner with Dolly. She said I was supposed to bring a camera. Look, I, I'm sorry about what happened this afternoon. Oh, that's all right. Forget it. Come on and sit down, will you? Thanks. It's not that easy to forget, Mike. Look, I hope you listen to me. You know, all this killer boy talk, this making out like I walk around with a bloody skull hanging under each arm, it's... It's phony, Mike. It's just all part of the build-up. You believe me, don't you? Well, I don't know yet. Well, I have to admit, it wasn't hard to make the act look good. I've always fought like a hoodlum in the ring. Ever since the Golden Gloves, it's the only way I know how to fight. But all this talk about how I love to hit photographers and reporters and... Well, that's just as phony as everything else that's happened to me. Phony as everything else. Joe, are you trying to say something? Yeah, I'm trying to say something. I'm... I'm trying to tell you what I found out just yesterday. Look, you know all these fights that I had that made me into such a big sensation? Yeah. They were fixed. They were what? They were tank jobs. Joe Shrine, Mel McCormick, Otto Paul, all three of them dove into that tank like seals after a sardine. Well, Joey, did you know anything about this? No, I didn't. Nothing at all? Mike, I swear to you, I didn't know a thing about it. Why should Jasper tell you now, all of a sudden? Well, there wasn't any reason to before. I was supposed to win the other ones. I didn't have to be in on them. But this time, Mike, it's a little different. This one I'm supposed to lose. But they have to be sure. You see, all these phony knockouts have me going in there tomorrow night as a favorite. So, all they have to do is bet with the champion and they'll clean up. What are you going to do, Joe? Are you going to go along with him? Well, answer me. Either you're a crook that's going to play ball or you'll tell him where to go. Why is it so complicated? Because I'm not just dealing with Jasper this time or Sal Benning or his manager. This time, Mike, I'm dealing with Willie Fletcher. He's behind the whole thing. Lily Fletcher, wow. How scared are you, Joey? I'm real scared. But I'm a lot more scared about some people I care about. Dolly, for instance, or my old man. Look, Mike, this time I'm up against a guy who uses guns. Yeah, he uses guns. He's a big man in the rackets. Now look, Joey, where do I fit in? Fletcher's coming over here tonight. 
Jasper's going to bring him here in about a half an hour. He's coming here? But why here? Well, they figure I'm a little green at this larceny business, and I want to set up kind of a dress rehearsal for the dive I'm supposed to take. Well, that's a nice social gathering, a real nice group. Look, Mike, I don't want to go through with this fight, but I've got some people I've got to protect. Now, if I'm going to try and run out on Willie Fletcher, well, I've got to have some ammunition of my own. What do you mean, ammunition? I want a picture of him. I want a picture of him and Jasper and me here in this room. And then tomorrow morning, I want this picture in every newspaper in the country tying him in with this fix. I want that thing spread so far and so wide that he won't dare touch Dolly or my own man. Now maybe you understand why I asked you to come here. Joey, pictures are my business. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to ask me. And you, you do it? You'll give it a try? If you're willing to throw $100,000 down the drain, of course I'm willing to try. But I want this to be a picture no one will ever forget. Now, the champ, he must be in on this, right? The great Sal Benning, the model champion? Look, Mike, he was in on this thing from the first day this fight was arranged. Then I want him in the picture, too. I want this wrapped up so clean and tight that Fletcher will spend the next ten years behind bars. Yeah, yeah, but uh, Jasper didn't say anything about bringing him along. Hey, where is Jasper now? Well, he's over at the champs picking up Fletcher. They're going to give me a ring just before they leave. Well, that's good. When he calls, you tell him you want the champ here. Oh, no, Mike, no. I don't think they'll buy that. Well, tell them they've got to buy it. Tell them you're a little bit nervous and you don't want to leave anything to chance. You want to go over the whole thing step by step with Sal. Well, look, what if they get wise? What... Come on, answer it. It hasn't got teeth. And tell them what I told you to tell them. Hello? Jasper? Oh, no, no, no. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, I, except I've been thinking, you know, I, I'm a little anxious about this thing, and I was wondering if we might try this. Uh... Mike, they're here. I can see them from the porch. Does it look all right? Looks okay to me. And are you sure we haven't forgotten anything? I don't think so. No, there should be enough light. Everything okay, sir? Yeah, okay. I don't like this burglar routine. Suppose someone sees me here. Nobody will see you. Why do we have to bother drawing pictures for this clown? It's simple enough, isn't it? He goes out in the sixth round when I hit him on the chin. Champ. Let's do exactly as you're told. Joey, check me back here. Right. Joey, how's it look? It looks all right. Yeah. Yeah, that should work. If you don't make any noise. And if you live long enough. What's the matter with you? Nothing the matter with me. You look a little nervous. Well, maybe I'm just the nervous type, huh? Too many lights. All right, Jasper. This is your kind of package. Tell them what you had in mind. All right. Sam? Hello, Joker. Now, the first thing I want you boys to remember is you fight your regular kind of fight for the first five rounds. Now, I want no mistakes. Like a guy bringing up a punch from the socks and belting the other guy out. Now, oh, in the sixth. Go on, Jasper. Get on with it. Like I was saying, we're in the sixth now. Now, Joey, you got an aggressive style. It's natural for you to push the fight. Right. You're getting close to Sal, punching the body like you always do, see? Now, here. Just about that time, see, in the sixth, Sal will flip out his mouthpiece like he always does. You know, he does it all the time. It's like a, uh, a characteristic. All right. There'll be no tip off to anybody but you. This is when you step in with a big right hook, like that, see? Mm -hmm. All right, you try it now. Slow motion. Big right hook. That's it. Great. Now, Sal, straight right inside the hook. 
If Joey catches on the chin, it's 100%. All right, let's go. Come on. Now, straight right. Now! <laughs> made a good picture, Willie. But I guess you can't win them all. I ought to make you eat it, Kovac. I ought to make you eat it like a billy goat. Boy, you talk tough. You scare me, Willie. How do you know I didn't fall in the State Athletic Commission hours ago, huh? Because you're a lousy liar. If you'd have phoned the commission, they'd be here already. Like a five-alarm fire. I don't suppose I have to tell you that you're not going back to New York until this fight's over. And maybe not then. You know too much, even without the picture. Go to your room. And remember what you've learned. Joey. Boy. The fight's going on tomorrow night. Nothing's changed. Except that your friend Kovac here is in pretty deep. Well? No. No, there isn't going to be a fight tomorrow night, Fletcher. You can't drag a grown man into a ring in front of 50,000 people, can you? Easy, Joey, easy. It's not worth it. No, it's worth it. You know, I'm sick and tired of crawling on the floor like a dog for you, Fletcher. Not for you, or for him, or for anybody. I'd rather be dead first. You will be, Joey. I can guarantee that. You want to try me? Come on. Willie, you want to try me? Joey? Joey, are you all right? Yes, yes, it's you all sure? right. Yes. Dolly, what made you throw the rock? What made me throw the rock? Well, I looked in the window and I was scared to death. I'm sure glad you did. Easy, Sal. Easy. No. No, let him, Mike. Come on, this will be the only inner shot I'll ever get it. Don't spoil it, don't spoil it. Here, hold it. This will make a lovely picture in tomorrow's papers, Willie. Maybe they can run alongside the one I took of you earlier. The roll I tore up? That's no good. You don't think I'm that dumb, do you? I switched film when we were playing hide-and-seek back there in the woods. Willie, like a friend said to me this afternoon, I'll be happy to make you up a whole set of prints. After I call the police. 